Now, if you're a regular viewer, you probably know by now that Sky News has been campaigning for an independent commission to oversee leaders' debates at uh, general elections. And we're joined now uh, by a Conservative MP, uh, Peter Bone, who thinks that they are a good idea. Um, before we get to the leaders' debates, I just want to ask you about a few things that Matt Hancock just said uh, in that interview. He said that if MPs have gone back to their constituencies and talked to normal people, then they should be ready to back the Prime Minister's deal. So are you? Uh, that's not quite what he said. I heard what he said. He said he went back to his constituents and they... And what they said to him was, get on with it. And that's absolutely true. And the only way you're going to get on and deliver Brexit is what's called a no-deal Brexit. And then at the end of March next year, we'll be out of the EU. We will have left. There was no question that I remember on the referendum about a deal or not. It was leave or remain. And the way you leave is to come out on the 29th of March. So he wasn't... He wasn't, I'm not accusing him of not telling the truth, but what he actually said was he went back and people told him to get on with it. That's exactly what they tell all MPs, and that they want to come out on the 29th of March. They want to actually leave. Do you think that MPs have changed their minds over the Christmas break? Because that was clearly what Number 10 was hoping. Well, if there's been any change, it's hardened the attitude of MPs towards what's called a no deal. Because the more and more information about the no deal uh, is clear that it's absolutely uh, OK to do it. We, we had the Secretary of State there just saying there's no problem on the health front. We had a senior civil servant come out and say, we're well prepared for, for no deal. And of course, the government isn't saying that because they're trying to get through their, um, their so called uh, uh, Brexit uh, deal. He wasn't quite saying there's no problem on the health front. He was saying that the plans are in place to try and mitigate any of the consequences. No, I think he actually, I was listening very carefully, he said there was going to be no problems with drugs and all the plans are in place. Uh, I, I couldn't... He, you asked him to give a guarantee. I don't think he could have given much more of a guarantee than he did. <laughs> now, you once called Theresa May the Brexit Queen and said that she would be carried shoulder-high through the streets to the echoing of cheering crowds as she visited your constituency after Brexit. Do you think that's still the case? Uh, I think you left a little bit out of that quote. <laughs> I think I said if she delivered the Brexit that people voted for, and when I said that, it looked like we were going to do that. Now, of course, it looks like we're going to do anything but that, and I'm afraid uh, the statute I was going to build in Wellingborough to Mrs May is probably not going to happen now. What what do you think the reaction in your constituents would be to Mrs May's still then? Well, at the moment, they're very frustrated. Um, they want to have a, the Brexit they voted for. They wanted to end the free movement of people, not pay billions and billions of pounds each and every year to, to the EU, make their own, our own laws in our own country, judged by our own ju judges. And clearly, Mrs May's deal f falls on all those fronts. So I don't think she would get a particular... She'd get a plight reception, but not a good reception. The um, Prime Minister's holding drinks parties with uh, some Conservative MPs mm. uh, this week. Uh, have you got an invitation? Uh, yeah, they were chasing me up yesterday whether I could go. Well, unfortunately, I'm speaking in the... Well, I'm speaking in the Sky News... Effectively, the Sky News debate when one of those <laughs> receptions is going on, and the other one I don't think I can make either. But they were chasing me up. There you go. Well, let's talk about the uh, debate, shall we? Uh, because tomorrow there is going to be this debate in Parliament uh, about the uh, Sky News uh, campaign to try and get an independent commission to look at leaders' debates in general elections. What's your view? Well, I think, first of all, well done, Sky News, and uh, getting, uh, what, close to 150,000 people to sign a petition is fantastic. And we're going to have this debate, three-hour debate, in the second chamber of the House of Commons tomorrow, and that's wonderful. And I have a private member's bill, which I, I've introduced. The second reading of that bill is in March. And it'll be, the debate will be very, very useful in uh, anything that comes up in that debate that I haven't already thought of can go into to my bill. But the advantage of uh, the debate and what Sky News has done it's got the public involved and put the pressure on the government. It would have been very easy for the, for the government just to say about my bill, well, it's, it's quite a good idea, but we're not going to do it, Peter. But the pressure from the public, I think, uh, helps us uh, achieve what we want. Why do you think there seems to be this reluctance from the government to press ahead with it? Well, I think all governments are the same. If they think that they can win, they're not going to have a debate. They say they will have a debate and they'll keep us... And then, of course, it never happens. Because there's too much risk. Yes, exactly. too much risk. So when we, if we can have an independent commission, it will be compulsory for the leaders' debate. So there will be two... In my bill, there will be two leaders' debates in the regulated period between the Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition and there will be one debate where all the leaders of the parties 
representing the House of Commons would take part. And there'd be proper debates. It wouldn't be just like you ask a question, then you ask the other person. No, this would be a debate between the leaders. So each of the leaders could come back and debate with the other what the other person has said. That's what we need. We need to test our future prime minister in that way, I think. And there could be an election sooner than we think, potentially. Yes. So this is something we probably have to get on with. Yes, well, um, the, my private member's bill is in, in March. Um, if both uh, the government and the opposition support it, we can get it through and on the statutory, statutory books, make it an act of parliament, if you like, within a few months. OK.